Welcome back to Meet the Market Leader TV show and today we are going to have a, a discussion with a former CEO of Tanesco Tanzania. Tanesco is a, the leading electricity provider and manufacturer in Tanzania where they supply the electricity in Tanzania and also neighbor countries in East Africa. So today we are going to discuss regarding um, his experience when he was a former CEO of Tanesco and as you know Tanesco as I told you is a multi-billion uh, dollar company and uh, they have a lot of uh, workforce uh, in Tanzania and employ a number of people and apart from that uh, the company has been uh, there for long time and a number of CEOs have been running the company for past uh, four or five decade, uh, decades so far so we're going to share his experience when he was a former CEO at Tanesco so welcome Mr. Felician Ramba. Thank you very much. Thank yes, yes. So, um, it has been a long time now. Yes. Yes, since uh, I think you left uh, Tanesco, but uh, there are a lot of things that uh, people they need to understand from you and they need to know from you um, regarding the, you know, what, um, the experience at Tanesco and then uh, the future of Tanzania and uh, as a Tanzania now we are going for industrialization, we are in the industrialization phase, I think probably we are in the uh, second phase. So people, before we go that far, people they want to know from you, who is Felician Brahma and where did you start and until you reach, uh, you become one of the top CEO in the country and mm. a few. Uh, black Thank you. Um, let me make a slight correction of the name. Yes. It is Felchesmi um, Ramba. Yes, yes. Felchesmi Ramba. Um, uh, I've been working with Tanesco for over 20 years. Yes, uh, yes. But I joined Tanesco in 1996 as an engineer trainee. Yes. yes. Uh, where I worked as a planning engineer, maintenance engineer, and then customer service engineer. After uh, some time, I also joined the uh, commercial section and the customer service, se uh, service section and then I was um, promoted into the level of senior manager marketing where I was overseeing all operations of the zones and the regions yes, yes. and then uh, taking advantage of uh, my business management knowledge I was again promoted into the position of general manager marketing before then uh, promoted again into being the deputy managing director of the company and finally the managing director of Tanesco for uh, I acted for two years and then I, I, I was in that capacity for three years so a total of five years so and how many staff did you manage or uh, you, you are leading at uh, Tanesco and what has challenged uh, you experience in leading a uh, huge number of uh, employees at the same time? During that time, we had a total of 7,000 uh, employees. 7,000? 7, 7,000 employees. Yes, yes. But also we had a number of uh, temporary uh, employees and, and task and specific task employees. Their total number will also be close to between six to eight thousand again. Yes, yes. So the total workforce of the mm. was around fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. That's a huge number. Yeah. And Tanesco is one of the if not the largest mm. uh, company in terms of its workforce, in terms of its um, capital, mm. in terms of its um, turnover. Yes. It's one of the largest companies in the country. Okay. Uh, what I can say, mm. when you are working with such a big number of employees, there are a number of challenges. Mm. One of them is to get the right kind of employees. Mm. Employees who are well trained, mm. but employees with the right attitude, mm. and employees who are committed, dedicated, with the passion, to deliver. Mm. Mm. Uh, one of the areas we have been uh, where the country is suffering a lot is that we hire people, but
but they don't have passion for the work. Mm. They don't have passion for the assignments. Mm. They also don't have commitment for the work. Yes, yes. It's like you hire people who are there waiting for their salaries at the end of the month. Yes. And their contribution, their delivery mm. does not match their expectations and salaries. Yes, yes. That, that's a very big challenge. But another area uh, where I see a lot of challenges in terms of workforce is getting people with the right skills. Yes, yes. You may have people coming with very good certificates mm. from their colleges, from their universities. But when you assign them the tasks, mm. you find that they are not skilled enough to give you the deliveries you expect of them. Yes. That is a very big challenge for our country, and especially for the people who are uh, recently graduating from the colleges. Yes, yes. But one other area is when you, 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 you find people are coming from their universities, from their colleges, and as soon as they join the, the, the company, they want to get rich in, mm. in a yes, moment. Sir. Yeah. And that's most of them are millennials. Yes. <laughs> yes. For the millennials, they, they want to come mm -hmm. and after two years, they want to drive the best car in town. Yes. They want to own a house. Yes. They want to start their own company. Mm -hmm. But that is impossible. You have, you have to build capacity. To build capacity. Yes. You have to work. Yes. You have to earn trust from your employer. Yes. Uh, and you have to earn trust from the society. Yes. So those are some of the, uh, mm. the challenges. They want to live life of uh, people who actually watch maybe through television. Oh yes, yeah. and, and there is a lot yeah. of of impact yeah. of of the uh, of, 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 of globalization mm. and social media. Yes, yes. Uh, when people look, they look into the television. They see how people live in New York. They see mm. how people live in Tokyo. And they want to emulate and mm. try to live the same mm. kind of life here, okay. uh, without putting into mind mm. what they have invested into their lives to live mm. the kind of, okay. of life. Tanzania is named as uh, one of the few countries in the world that have uh, more foreign CEOs than local. In fact, that uh, we have uh, uh, four percent of uh, total CEOs um, actually they are local and uh, remain one that six percent are foreigners so how this situation is affecting the economy and also what is a possible way do you think that uh, uh, country as a country we need to adapt so that we can uh, eradicate or we can uh, uh, get uh, you know we can you know we can avoid this kind of challenge that we are passing mm -hmm. through first of all four percent is very low Yes, yes. And as a society, we need to work on this number and mm. see that we can have a bigger share of, mm. of, of local CEOs yes. in the yes. uh, in, in, in the investment, rather in the employment market. Yes, yes. Uh, why am I saying that this percentage is too low? Yes, yes. Let's think of a company, a foreign company. Mm. which plans to come and invest here. Mm. One of the first things they will be looking for mm. is whether in the country there are people, local people in the country mm. who can contribute positively to their companies. They want to come here mm. and have right people who can work into their companies mm. to make their companies successful. They don't like to come here with everybody. Mm. And by the way, it is always more expensive mm. to come with mm. foreigners, to, foreigners to work here mm. than to employ locals here. Mm. Now, the only problem we are having mm. is that uh, most of our CEOs of the people who are trained, mm. say in the business schools, in mm. the leadership schools, mm. they have education, but mm. they don't have leadership skills. Mm. And so you find when these people come here, they employ somebody mm. who works in that organization and cannot match the expectations mm. of the employer. Mm. When the employer employs a CEO, they have a certain level of expectation mm. out of this CEO. Mm. 
Now, if the CEO cannot deliver to that expectation, mm. it, it, it automatically mm. uh, puts off the investors, mm. the, the, the company owners. And not only that, but it also, brand, it also brands mm. the country. Mm. You see, those people, they will say, if you go to Tanzania, this is the kind of manpower, this is the kind of CEOs you can expect in Tanzania. Mm. CEOs who cannot contribute, who cannot mm. bring success to uh, your investment. Mm. So, um, it is very important that we change that branding. Okay. And we change that branding. Mm. We, we, we come up and uh, stand face the challenge mm. and be able to develop ourselves and to have a pool of CEOs who are competent enough to mm. attract uh, employment from world organizations, from world companies. Unless we can reach to that stage. So, uh, in terms of uh, policy and also implementation of the policy, um, do you think Tanzanians uh, lag behind from that? Or we have a very good policy and uh, we have a very good uh, strategy to implement? Yeah, I, I, I mm. believe there are areas we need to strengthen. Mm. to strengthen in terms of uh, policies. Mm. Uh, for example, uh, we, may, we may put it as, as, as a policy that whenever a foreign company comes here, they mm. open business in the country mm. and say employ the CEO, mm. they must have the second in command mm. uh, from, from, from local Tanzania. Mm. If we do that, then we will have uh, local people who are underlearning from mm. the CEOs. Yes. And after some time of learning, mm. we will have people who are mm. not only educated, mm. but who are also uh, skilled mm. in leadership, yes. in leading. Yes. That, that is the only way we can, yes. we, we can get uh, the, the, the best CEOs uh, going forward. Yeah, so what we are saying, uh, if, for example, the, 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 the government will put a rule which says that any foreign company which comes and starts their business here, mm. they must have uh, local Tanzanians mm. as the second in command in their companies. Mm. That will give opportunity for the local Tanzanians to underlearn from mm. the top CEOs mm. and after some time, they will develop their own skills of leadership. Now that will complement the educational knowledge they have from their schools, from their colleges, from the universities. Mm. When they couple that knowledge with the skills they gain from practically mm. uh, participating in leadership mm. with the top leader, mm. it will automatically help them to grow. Mm. And, and that, that, is, that is going to be very important. If, for example, the government mm. sets that mm. as a regulation, yes, yes. it will help to develop our local Tanzania. Yes. That, that is one. But the, the other area where the government may chip in mm. is, for example, uh, to set it as a rule mm. that a certain number of CEOs mm. must be local. Yes, yes. For example, if, if we say local CEOs must be 50%, mm. uh, we may be uh, putting, uh, uh, the, we may have target for a number of years. For example, we say in the next five years, mm. the number of CEOs in the mm. companies must be at least 50%. Mm. After some time, we say 70%. After some time, we say 80%. So, by so doing, Mm. It will also help mm. to give opportunities to our local consumers. What do you think if uh, the government, if it's, uh, the government interfere this situation, instead of leaving the market, uh, you know, to you know, market force and labor to you know, to operate automatically, why government of Tanzania that don't intervene in this situation? Maybe they can invest. They can give out maybe a scholarship or they can select maybe 200 Tanzania and uh, sponsor them to attend you know some uh, you know 
basic course, advanced course and uh, some program to prepare them to be ready to run top uh, you know company in Tanzania maybe 200 each year maybe the government can spend maybe if, um, maybe 20 million USD for Harvard and uh, Oxford and then they train them for two years to prepare them to become one of the top CEOs in the country. Why the government do it? They don't want to invest on that. Well, I think the, the, there is, uh, there is um, a, a level to which the government may try to intervene, mm. but also the individuals are supposed to take mm. their own initiatives. Let me give you a few examples. Mm. I know uh, some people mm. in the corporate world who have ascended from low level in the companies mm. and slowly they have grown to mm. uh, taking leadership roles mm. in that company. And one very good example is Akashia. Mm. Uh, Akashia have recruited a local Tanzanian to be the, the managing director recently. Mm. But this was the guy who started at the lower level mm. and slowly he was growing within the company. Mm. Now the advantage of growing within that company is uh, uh, knowing the culture of mm. the company, uh, knowing the, uh, the, the, the vision, the mission of the company and you grow as part of that company. You okay. know where the company wants to go. Okay. Now, the, the problem with the government fully uh, intervening is when you have people who have mm. been trained, whether in Oxford, Harvard, or wherever, they come here with education, but still they don't have attitude. Mm. They have good education, but they don't have leadership attitude. That is when you find um, uh, companies, foreign companies complaining that when we employ Tanzanians, what they are thinking about is how to get good money and run away. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Like, during your leadership at um, Tanesco, you know, Tanzania they announced that they want to go for uh, in a salvation. I think third or the or fourth, uh, maybe it's, I think probably it's third. They mean they want to undergo third in a salvation uh, phase in Tanzania. So one of the key factors is electricity and uh, and uh, government they announced several times they are going to start to produce electricity at uh, maybe a certain level but every time they don't achieve that level. So what was the main challenge and uh, what the way forward do you think? Um, there are a number of challenges. Yes, yes. But one of them, investment mm. in energy is very expensive. Yes, yes. And you will find that um, unless the government chips in mm. and make significant investment, if you leave investment on power on the private mm. sector, mm. yes, they would invest, but they will come up with uh, very expensive tariffs, which mm. most of the people will not afford. Mm. And if you are talking of industrialization, then mm. it will not help to mm. promote production in the industries mm. at a reasonable cost. Mm. But now, I can see um, a lot of good signs mm. because now the government is intending to invest huge investments and mm. this is exactly what, uh, what, what we want or rather mm. what is needed in this country mm. to have mega power investments mm. which will assure uh, reliable, mm. uh, reliable but also Mm. Uh, affordable power mm. for, for for a reasonable time. Let me give an example mm. of the of the big project we are we have been talking about for some time now, the Stiglitz Gorge. Mm. With the Stiglitz project, we mm. expect to generate uh, two thousand one hundred megawatts. Two thousand one hundred megawatts. megawatts. That's that true. is almost twice our installed capacity now. Okay. Now, when you come with that mm. amount of power, mm. you are sure that it will be able to sustain mm. your uh, growth, mm. the economic growth, mm. for the next 10, 20 years. Yes, yes. 
and not only sustaining growth but also mm. it will come at a reasonable price mm. because it is an investment by the government. The issue uh, of um, exporting uh, electricity to neighbors uh, countries like uh, Kenya and other countries. So why as a country they decide to export electricity to other country while you know, inside the country there is a problem of uh, electricity? Uh, to, to, to my understanding, mm. so far we are exporting we are exporting very little amount of power to mm. to Kenya mm. and yeah I think it's only Kenya. Okay. Uh, I think Kenya. I, I'm not sure whether 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 they have started exporting to Uganda. We, mm. we, we were planning. Uh, we are planning to start exporting to. Mm. The, the, to the night to the boundary villages mm. nearby villages in Uganda mm. yes but for Kenya mm. we are exporting through Horhoro Horhoro yes Tanga Tanga yes so power comes from Tanzania to Kenya through mm. Horhoro okay but what happens is that there is an understanding mm. uh, intergovernmental understanding mm. for the East African countries mm. uh, and the understanding is that if there is power in one side of the border mm. and there is no power on the other side of the border on the, mm. the, the other country, mm. then being East African members, mm. power should be able to mm. cross the border mm. and to go into the neighbor. Okay, nice. So that, that is exactly what is happening with the power mm. we are supplying to Kenya mm. and probably to, to Uganda now. But in the future, mm. uh, power is a commodity. Mm. Like any other commodity. Yes. So it can be imported and it can be exported. Mm. Yes. And here we are talking of exporting power mm. as a commodity for trading. Yes. Whereby the country can earn uh, money which we but we need. Mm. Now, for example, if the government will complete investment on stickless gold and generate mm. that mm. huge amount of power, mm. and at the same time we have countries who needs power mm. and we need money, mm. then we can start exporting power to these countries. But still we have a shortage of power in Tanzania. Oh, of course, my, my expectation is that by the time we have 2,100 megawatts, mm. uh, power within the country will be enough and we'll have significant surplus okay. to supply to the neighbors. Okay, that's good. So you're one of the uh, speakers at uh, Strategic and High Performance Leadership Summit. And uh, you're going to speak there at, um, at, uh, at, at that conference. So, what people, you know, they can expect to hear and uh, to, you know, learn from you. Mm -hmm. in just a summary. Right. Uh, people should come expecting to to learn how uh, you can bring improvement mm -hmm. in the organization you are yeah. leading. Yes. Uh, how you can uh, change things. How you can. You can leave a mark yes. in the organization you are leading. Mm. And the, the thing here is that people need to learn, mm. uh, people need to improve, mm. and people need to do better in whatever they are doing. Mm. And so when they learn, when they hear mm. from a person who has, uh, who has already participated in, in what they are aspiring to do, Mm. It, it will help them to make a step of improvement. Yeah, that's good. And um, what is your opinion regarding this? Uh, um, most of the people, especially managers, CEOs, and uh, general managers and uh, supervisors, they have uh, less training than bartenders, than waiters, than uh, uh, security guards. What is the reason behind? They don't have a skills, they don't have a training, constant training mm. like those people. What, what yeah. is the gap and you know, what's the way forward uh, to fill that gap? Let, 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 let me tell you one thing. Yes, I remember mm. in 2004 I went to Japan mm. and one thing uh, mm. I learned in Japan shocked me. Mm. The thing is when, when you go into, you, you enter the train, mm. you find that people will come into the train and the mm. moment they sit in the chair, mm. they take a pocketbook mm. and they start reading. 
Mm. So everybody will be moving around with a book mm. and they don't waste any time. Wherever they mm. they sit, they start reading. Mm. They don't sit in a train and be there for one, two hours mm. aimlessly. Mm. They start reading. Mm. So people, the, the, the whole society is a society of reading people. Mm. People who want to get more knowledge. Mm. People who want to get more ideas. Mm. Now the difference I'm seeing here is that we have people who are not accustomed to reading, mm. to gaining new knowledge. Mm. The, the last time you find, the last time a person read, serious, serious read is when he was in school, mm. when he was in college. After mm. that, there is no more reading. Yeah. But to develop yourselves, mm. you need to keep on reading, constantly reading. Mm. Yes. And study. Now another thing which we have seen as a trend now mm. is that our people they are very good at social media, at WhatsApp messages, WhatsApp gossips, mm. and so they spend a lot of time on things which are not truly oh, yeah they are not truly beneficial. Mm. Eh? Yes. But the moment our people will start mm. uh, acknowledging that mm. time is of value, mm. that is when mm. you will see people developing themselves. Mm. On the other hand, training mm. is costly and the training is investment. Mm. So when you have the middle managers, the mm. managers mm. in the company and you want to train them, mm. you have to train them with anticipation mm. that after some time you'll have return mm. of your training. Mm. But return on training takes time. Mm. So you need to be patient waiting mm. for mm. the return. Yes. But for some people, they want to invest on training and next month, they mm. want to start seeing the outcome of training. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. It will take time. And for that reason, some of the employers, they are discouraged training the middle managers and other managers because they mm. say, oh, if I train the manager, the sales manager, the HR manager, it will not bring any change. But the truth is, change will come, but after some time. On the other hand, for a watchman or for a front office person, the outcome of training is immediate. Mm. And so for some employers, they mm. want to see this immediate outcome of training. So they think, if I train the watchman, I'm sure uh, my, 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 my company will be safe, they will be mm. secure. If I train the front office lady, mm. she will speak mm. uh, more politely with the customers, she will be customer mm. friendly and mm. so the, the, the return will be immediate. Yeah, sure. But I believe mm. that training should be should cover mm. uh, all areas of the organization mm. and it has to be systematic. I agree with you hundred uh, percent. people they um, they don't you know they don't go for training because they feel like uh, they know everything, mm. and uh, while the world is changing every day, every second, you find uh, something new, and mm. uh, they need to equip themselves with uh, with such kind of skills. Otherwise, we find uh, CEOs in different companies they are not competent compared to their personal assistant right. to their business, uh, mm. to their you know front office as many. They know much than even it's their their managers. Mm. I wonder. Because the, that gap is a, it exists because they don't go for training, mm. and they know that. And sometimes they blame that uh, uh, you know training is very expensive. Mm. If you find it very expensive, <laughs> they try. They say if if you think the training is more expensive, try yeah. ignorance. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. So, uh, Mr. Mramba, just to wind up our, uh, our interview today, uh, what is uh, you know things that we find that uh, in order to achieve our vision 2015, uh, 2015, not 2015, 2020, 2020 uh, what are the things that as a country we need to adapt or we need to do so that we can achieve our vision uh, much easier and faster? Yeah, uh, when we look at the uh, the, the vision of the, of the government, the vision yes. of the country. There are a number of areas, mm. uh, but I believe 
mm. that if we can train our people to offer uh, the right leadership, mm. that is probably one of the areas which mm. can push us to move very fast. Mm. Because leadership is key. Mm. Unless we have the right leaders, leaders mm. with passion, leaders with commitment, mm. leaders with, with the drive, uh, mm. who can make things happen. Mm. Uh, we may have visions, mm. but the vision is driven by a visionary leader. Yes, yes. So we need to have visionary leaders in the organizations, in the mm. uh, private sector, uh, yes. in, the, in the corporate world. Mm. We need to have visionary leaders. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Uh, uh, Bramba, Thank for you uh, coming to our interview today. And uh, we, I think our viewers will learn a lot of things from you today. And I actually appreciate you for your quality time. And uh, one more important thing that our sister company, Econo Speaker, they are going to have a strategic and high performance leadership summit on 28 to 29. Uh, for June. So Mr. Mramba is going to be one of the speaker and is going to share his experience during uh, his uh, top level uh, leadership uh, in uh, uh, government and uh, also Tanesco. So don't miss to attend this program for uh, strategic and high performance leadership summit on 27, 27, 28 to 29 June. Uh, and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also to share this video to more people as you can so that they can have this message and see you next time.